Let's go. Soon. Hey, I've been sitting in the car waiting for you. I've been sitting on this couch waiting for you. I don't know what to tell you, man. I don't know. Well, I, you know, if you missed the beginning, yes, I am in my car. Uh, I'm in Irvine, California. Oh, look at you wearing the jersey. A uh, flash sale on our merch site. Go ahead and you can customize the jersey. Did you just put? Did you put a nickname or did you just put Ploof Twenty Four? No, I think I, I think I'm Special T. Let me see. Turn it around. How am I supposed to do that? You physically turn around. And hold the camera. Hey, listen. Look, I can do it. Just flash <laughs> it to the back. Just trust me. It's specialty. Okay, specialty. <laughs> specialty. Hey, did you, I don't know if you caught last night's live Instagram live I did with Nick Castellanos and his son Liam. Were you on there for that? I wasn't there. I've seen some of the highlights of him making fun of you. That was nice. Do I look exactly like Tatis Jr. right now or what? <laughs> No. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm not as good looking as Fernando Tatis Jr. You know, Greg, your hair is white. You have a beard. <laughs> Liam. Hey, honesty. I'll take it all day long. Yeah, it was nice. See, it's was not nice. just me. It's not just me. It's even like a five-year-old kid. Yeah, it's seven. Seven. It seems, like it's, it seems like it's universal. By the way, people, go <laughs> check it out. We did a lot of talking about the son, the uh, shirt that, that Liam um, drew for his dad for his birthday, he wore on the purple carpet at the All-Star Game. Now you can purchase it yourself. Um, so the, the website is up on our Instagram Live that we put out on our YouTube channel last night. Part of the proceeds go to help uh, cancer research for kids. So what Liam has done is amazing. He can make fun of me as much as he wants as long as he continues to do the good work and learn about charity. And so that was awesome. I love it. What also was awesome was last night's uh, series that continued in Los Angeles between the top two teams in baseball, the Giants and the Dodgers. On Monday night, it was the Dodgers with the walk-off thanks to Will Smith. Last night, it was Wilmer Flores with a ninth-inning go-ahead homer against Kenley Jansen. Kenley did not even finish the inning, and he left to a chorus of boos. His last two outings have not been good. Afterward, Dave Roberts said it, it basically pissed me off that the fans are booing Kenley. Do you have a problem with that at all? With the booing? Yeah. No, I don't. You know, it's – look, it's a big series, okay? Giants-Dodgers, you know how it is, man. That is a rivalry, you know, through and through. And what I always tell people is, is if you're going to sit up there and you're going to take the applause and you're going to be, you know, when people are – when you're doing good – and you're out there smiling, waving, and everyone's cheering for you, you got to realize that the opposite's going to happen too. Like, you have to take the boos with the applause. So, Kenley understands he didn't get the job done. Mm -hmm. If he comes back, you know, the next time and gets the job done, they're going to be cheering for him. So, I don't really have a problem with it. I think fans have the right to voice frustration. Um, and, you know, you just try to try to avoid, uh, you know, giving up, giving up the ninth inning homer. But I, I don't think Kenley – cares i think dave is just trying to kind of like protect his players i think that's exactly what's going on and kenley's heard the boos over the last few years and yeah. i mean it's hard to be a dominant closer as long as he has been good and he's been great this year his last two outings have been crappy that happens with closers mm -hmm. it does if you were to ask all 30 teams are you happy with your closer and i'm just talking about the fan bases not even the executives or the manager or anything if you were to just ask the fan bases i would say maybe two or three are happy with their closer situation. The rest are like, I got to buckle up every time the ninth inning gets there. That's just yeah. That's the way the, the, the gig goes. It's, it's, it's tough to get those last three outs, that's for sure. Yeah. By the way, did you – I'm not trying to be mean here. Did you ever get booed significantly? Probably. So you I, don't even, I don't even remember it. I mean, uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure I did. I'm sure I did, Chris. Okay. Yeah, every, every big leaguer goes through it. It happens. Yeah. Not a big deal. What well, was a big deal that for the first time in the modern era, in the history of this series, you had one team hit a game-winning homer, and then the next night, the other team hit a game-winning homer in the ninth inning. So first time in the history of that series. It's been awesome. It's been a ton of fun. Let's keep it going for two more games in that series. Yeah. Yeah. Before we move on, I want to let you know that today's Instagram Live is presented by our good friends at Foco.com slash John Boy. Use the keyword John Boy 15 to get 15% off your uh, first order. And they're the ones that are going to fit you up for the rest of the baseball season. So they got shirts, they got the straw hats, they got slides, they got everything you need. It's foco.com slash John Boy. Use the keyword John Boy 15 for 15% off your first order. So go do your shopping now. Still plenty of time left in the baseball season. 
All right, we continue on. Yanks and Sear and uh, the Red Sox resume their rivalry now up in Boston. Last weekend in New York, the Yanks took two out of three. So this is a four-game set. If the Yankees take three of four and then sit possibly five games behind the division leaders after Sunday, are you going to be uber interested in the division? I'm already uber interested in the division. There's plenty of games left. I think it's a little too early to standings watch. You know, it's fun to go look at it and see where your team is, but there's, there's still quite a bit of baseball. You know, uh, so this is always going to be an interesting series. Although I was looking at the pitching matchups, and there's nothing that really, like, gets me super excited. we got Montgomery versus Hauk tonight. Uh, Cole, Rodriguez, Tyone, Evaldi. So I'm kind of interested for that one. A couple older guys going at it. Then uh, mm-hmm. Domingo Herman versus Martin Perez. I don't know. I'm not, like, super interested in the matchups uh, on the pitching side. But that's always fun. These are always fun games to watch. There's a lot of... Uh, a lot of animosity between the two teams and fan bases and all that. But, yeah, I mean, the Yankees, like, they got to go start winning series. They've done I think they've won the last three series, four mm-hmm. series. So they're on the right track. Um, but, yeah, these head-to-head series mean a lot in the standings. So although I don't really want to watch the standings yet, like, they got to take care of business. It means everything to the Yankees, and I'm not sure they can win three of four up there. So these yeah. two teams have played nine games this year. New York has been held to three runs or less in seven of the nine meetings. If you don't score more than three runs in a game at Fenway, you ain't winning. You ain't winning, particularly going against that offense. That offense has been dominant this year. It's been remarkably consistent. Um, You know, some people say it's top heavy. I'll I'll take guys that can mash one through five. I think in their last two games, they've clubbed 11 homers, and now they're swinging hot bats going into Fenway. I mean, they – I'm going to set the over-under on Red Sox homers in this series at 14. Whoa, in four games? Yes. I'll take the under. I'll take the over just to make it fun. Okay. Oh, yeah, you just – yeah. You think they're going to bang I, – I mean, I like I like the team. They can hit for sure. That 14 homers is a lot, though, man. Yeah. The Yankees, by the way, have a – this is a road trip from hell. Or, or it could be a godsend. Either way you think it, if they go win, it's right. amazing because they can catch – you know, the Rays are right there. So they go Boston to Tampa. This is a, a tester road trip right here. Hey, by the way, I'm rooting for the Yankees to take three of four. More interesting divisions means more for us to talk about. I don't care. I'm not a Yankees fan. I'm not a Red Sox fan. I'm an Indians fan. So it has no bearing on me whatsoever. I just want to root for – if, if it, the situation was reversed, I'd be rooting for Boston to win three of four and take the series. By the way, somebody just wrote in the chat, uh, Data Dookie is – Great name, by the way. Is Ciro's living out of his car already? Not quite. <laughs> Have, haven't been kicked out of the house just yet, but the day is young. You never know. All right. Um, speaking of moving on, your mean Mercedes put out a cryptic post on social media that he is retired from baseball. Uh, the White Sox are saying he's just taking a leave of absence, nothing official just yet. A lot of people will circle that date in mid-May where Tony La Russa aired him out for swinging 3-0 and against the Twins position player in Willens Ostadio as the downfall of his season. If Mercedes has indeed left baseball, how much is the White Sox manager to blame, in your opinion? Oh, man, I love bashing Tony La Russa. I really do. But I don't think I'm going to bash him too hard here. Like. There is correlation in the numbers, like, from that day on. Like, it's been pretty bad. But I I don't think the manager has that much, you know, sway over you. I mean, yeah, like, your mean maybe was down for a day or two. But that's not going to, like, spiral you the way he did. Like, at some point, you know, you're a professional. You can play through things. You hear people naysay you all the time. Typically, it's not your manager. But, you know, sometimes that does happen. I've been yelled at. I've been called out in the media by my manager. And you just have to get over it. Really? You got sure. Out. Really? Sure. Because very, very few great not like, managers. Not like that. Not like where he said he doesn't know how to play the game. I mean, that was bad, dude. I mean, mm-hmm. people kind of forget how bad it was. Yes. Um, but, like, I, you know, your mean has to, you know, I don't think that was the reason he started trending downward. And I'm not sure it's the reason he's retiring. I have no idea. If he is retiring, if he's not retiring, he said he is. But I'm not going to blame that on Tony La Russa. As much as I freaking want to, I just, you know, at some point, maybe the game isn't fun for him anymore. And maybe, shit, maybe it is Tony La Russa's fault. I don't know. I, I really don't know how to answer this question. Because I, I want to go in on Tony, but I really, in my, like, experience, 
you know, it, you have to get over that and, and continue to play ball. You're professional. Well, it's also let's remember how much of a grind it was for Yuri Mercedes. He's not sure. a twenty-two year old kid. I think he's twenty-eight years old before yeah. he cracked the big leagues. And he had such a remarkable run the first five weeks of the year. And th so this thing happened on May seventeenth. At the time, he was hitting three sixty-four with an OPS of nine eighty-four. Yeah. When he got demoted at the end of June, he was hitting two seventy-one, and his OPS was down to seven thirty-two. I can't draw a, cor uh, a correlation between the two because Jermaine Mercedes had no track record and things even out over a six month season. You know that better than anybody. So, you know, the averages become the averages. He wasn't going to be a 364 hitter and OPS mm -hmm. of 930 for the year, most likely. It's just how he deals with things. And he actually had been hitting really well at AAA. And he was possibly on the cusp of rejoining the team maybe in the next few weeks to help him out. Who knows? But you know, something's going on here. If I were a betting man, I would say that he's going to come back and somebody's going to talk to him. And we'll see him again in AAA and perhaps even the major leagues with a September call-up. I think so, too. And I retired abruptly from the Texas Rangers organization. It was because I felt slighted. I, I thought I should have been called up. They t were mm -hmm. telling me I was going to be the first guy up. They didn't call me up. Like, the, the someone went down. I think it was Beltre. But, or, no, it was Odor went down. Mm -hmm. And they said they were going to call me up, didn't call me up. I was miserable in AAA, walked right into the manager's office, and I said, I'm done. I said, you know, I, I, I'm i being lied to, and I don't like that, so I'm out of here. Possibly that was a situation that happened with your mean. Maybe they were telling him something, and he feels slighted. You never know. No, you never know. Right. All right, let's move on to the Atlanta Braves. They kick off a very strange road trip. It's nine games in eight days and only two cities. So it's Philadelphia, and then it's in New York against the Mets. It's the two teams that are ahead of them in the NL East standings. Right now, they are four and a half back of the Mets. Will the Braves return home to Atlanta in a better situation or a worse situation? Oh, man. <laughs> um, God, that's tough. I, I, th I, I think they probably end up in a worse situation. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. I think, you know, it's tough to go on the road. You know, I want them to come back in a better situation, Chris, but they're going up against some pretty good pitching in in uh, in Philly. And then they got to go to New York. And it's tough to play in New York. And that team's – the, the Braves are two games under 500. You know, we keep wanting them to, you know, to break through and, and to catch this division because it's kind of been sloppy. But they got to prove it first, man. So I'm not going to sit here and say they're going to – go on the road and be this road warrior and come back and all of a sudden they're being first place because they got to prove it to me first. I've been, I've been trying to pump these guys up all year long. And Same here. They've had injuries and then they've underperformed. By the way, by the time they get back to Atlanta, the trade deadline will have almost passed. And they have been active, right? They added Jock Peterson. They added Stephen Boat. Those are kind of pieces um, that can help. But it's not the big swing, particularly with no Ronald Acuna the rest of the year. Like, do you want to see them try for a – a Chris Bryant and say, hey, you know what? Let's go for it. Do I want to? Of course I want to see that. Okay. Cool. Yeah. We'll see. we'll see. I will say this. I think the road trip is on their starting pitching. Because if you're going to have nine games in eight days, you can't afford to have a guy go two and two-thirds on the road trip. So this is on Charlie Morton and Max Freed and Muller and Smiley. And good to see Tukey Tucson. One of my favorite names in all of baseball come back up. So give them quality starts. Give them six innings so you give this team a fighting chance to maybe go five and four on the road trip. Right? Yeah, yeah. I I, I want to see them win, Chris. I want, I've been, I've been so asking for it. I, I want to see them win, but they just haven't done it yet. My goodness. I will say this. Our girl Ashlyn, who is a huge Braves fan, to watch her Twitter feed during a, a Braves game is – it's artwork. It really is. You can you She's can read else. you can read the Alabama twang in each one of her posts. <laughs> it makes it even more funny. All right, last one. Giannis celebrated his NBA championship and his Finals MVP by driving through a Chick Fil A yesterday and ordering exactly fifty nuggets. I guess is what we're going to call them. He said, "Not forty nine, not fifty one, fifty. So it matches his point total from Game Six. If you made the same order, how many of the 50 could you eat in one sitting? I might try that order today. I swear I might. I'm, I'm 
craving Chick Fil A now that you're you're saying it. I don't know, fifty. I might be able to get. I think I could get it down. My typical order at Chick Fil A is two yeah. spicy chicken sandwiches. I take no buns. Okay. I just crush the chicken. Okay. So that's so, like I would say two chicken sandwiches is maybe like ten nuggets. Maybe a little more, maybe twelve. I'll give you. Fuck. Could maybe you I eat could. four of those? Four maybe plus. I couldn't. Maybe I couldn't. <laughs> well, I'm not saying you have to get through fifty. I'm saying give me a number I would, yeah, you can get through. Probably. Prob I could probably get to thirty. Should we do this one day? I think it's going to become a thing. I think it's like the Giannis is going to become like an order at Chick Fil A, and people are going to go do it. It's probably going to be like a viral thing. Right. So we're, pro we're probably late on it already, Chris. We're too old. This we're thing works so fast, dude. I'm they sure do. there's been a ton of videos out there. People already trying the Giannis. I know. I know. It was just too. Yeah, I had too much to do yesterday. I couldn't drive the 2.7 miles where Chick Fil A is from my house in order to get the order. I think my I'd like burn my mat like 50 like that hot oil too. I don't know, man. Would you use sauce or no? See, that's why I get the spicy chicken. I don't really like their Chick Fil A sauce. Oh, yeah, the one? I'm not like a creamy sauce guy. It's not my thing. We actually ordered just the chick. You can just order Chick Fil A sauce from. We have it, yeah. Amazon or something out there. I don't know. My son I, loves it. Yeah, so we have it in our fridge too. What do you have coming up on John Boy Media? Let's hear it. Dude, today I have a sequence coming out, um, and it's a funny one. Sometimes you got to go and, and make a, someone that's, or a video that's not as serious. So I'm talking about how I became the greatest hitter ever against position players pitching. Mm. I go over my, a couple of my at-bats. Um, and then that's it. It's a very easy day for me today. Tomorrow will be the series recap um, for talking baseball. But Thursdays are my, my light day. Chris, what do you got? Well, uh, we just came out with the latest episode of the Rose Rotation. Uh, Miguel Rojas of the Marlins is my co-host. He, as always, has some great, great stories. Uh, he played in that 18-1 to debacle the other night. He kind of takes us through that. He also played in the game where they gave up 29 runs to the Braves a year ago. So he's been a part of all that sort of stuff. We also welcome Eric Hosmer of the San Diego yes. Padres into the fold, who's got some great stories, not only on Tatis, but Salvador Perez. Um, really, really fun stuff. And he also talks about his appearance on The Tonight Show, where he had his hair touched by a supermodel. Not bad. I, I, Not bad. I, lo I, love, I love Haas, man. He's got that, that it factor. He does. You hang out with him, nope, nobody's looking at you. They're all looking at him. I know. And now he's back in his hometown of Miami for the next four nights. So he was really looking forward to that. So he's got some really, really good, fun stories. It's a blast. Go check it out uh, wherever you download your podcasts. Uh, or you uh, you can check us out on our YouTube channel as well. And hey, a quick reminder. Why do we got to talk about Juan Soto? Did something happen to Juan Soto? Someone in the chat says, please speak about Juan Soto. I think I think it was just that he's really he good. baseball. He's the, like one of the best hitters in baseball. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, know. wow. What? That's a rough call. <laughs> I know that the guy the guy on top looks like he smells like cat piss. I got to be honest with you, dude. I don't. I actually smell great. My natural body odor is phenomenal. That was a hell of a try on your part. So, somebody said I couldn't take you seriously on Shark Week. Why not? That was great. You're the best, bro. No, You're the hardest worker in show business. You and Ryan yeah. Seacrest, I told you that. Yeah, just slightly different tax bracket. But we already talked about your meme, Will. You're a little late to the chat. That's okay. We understand not everybody can make it on time. So go back and check us out on YouTube. This will be out in about uh, two hours or so if you want the, the viewing version. Uh, it'll also be saved on the Rose Rotation if you want to do that. Follow us, and um, you can see it immediately. All right, I got to go run and watch a baseball game. All right? All right, see you, Rose. Good luck today. I might go try that Giannis. I'm going to go do it. Do, if so, videotape it. I set the over-under for you at 35 and a half. I believe in you. Okay. Come on. We'll see. We'll see. I'm hungry. Everybody have a great Thursday in your baseball world. We'll see you again Friday morning, 1130 Eastern, 830 a.m. Pacific. Peace. Later, guys.